Okay, ciao. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our regular weekly series of travel tips. And I'm Katie. I'm the host of the Italy Travel Planning Facebook community and also the founder of Untold Italy Travel Resources Podcast and Small Group Tours. We're doing a lot of things these days. Anyway, today we have a very special event and I'm excited to bring it to you. What we're doing today is we're going to do a live itinerary consult. A few weeks ago, we put a call out, or I did a session a bit like this, to, talking about itinerary overwhelm. And I know a lot of people really feel overwhelmed with their itineraries. And so uh, my friend Danielle, who is here, and she actually does itinerary consults for people who are a bit stuck with their Italy itineraries. And so what we might thought we might do is do a live consult so you can see exactly what this service will give you if you choose to take away the overwhelm and, and let someone help you with your planning your trip. So joining us today is our wonderful group member, Jen, and she's joining us live from Wisconsin. And she's going to run through her itinerary with Danielle. But before we do that, I'm going to throw to Jen. Um, and she's going to explain, just give her a little bit of an introduction and tell you all about her and her family's trip to Italy and yeah, what she needs help with. Over to you, Jen. Thank you so much. Um, my name is Jen. I live in Wisconsin and my husband and my three kids, uh, we are going to Italy for two weeks in June. It'll be our first trip. I have a 17 year old daughter, a 14 year old son and a nine year old son. Um, as I said, it's our first trip. So it is a little overwhelming. Um, we are going, we're flying into Florence and we'll be there for four days. And then we're spending nearly a week in Atrani on the Amalfi coast. And then we are spending our last four days in Rome. So kind of besides our airfare and our Airbnbs, we have everything up in the air. <laughs> um, so I'm very much looking forward to this. <laughs> Oh, great. Thanks, Jen. And sorry, how long are you going for? What was, uh... Yep, we're going for two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. So that's a pretty standard time for an itinerary, especially from the States, I think. So that's good. Okay. And now I wanted to introduce my lovely friend, Danielle, who if you listen to our Untold Italy podcast, she is a regular on our show. And that's because... She knows so much. She's got a lot of, like, just a passion for Italy. And she also has a lot of in-depth knowledge about the whole Italian peninsula, but especially the south, uh, you know, around the Amalfi Coast area and south where her family is from, but a little bit further south from there in the Cilento Coast. So, Danielle, would you do a quick introduction for us too? Yeah. Um, my name is Danielle Oteri, and I am the founder of Feast Travel, uh, I've lived in Italy. I'm an art historian by training and I've lived especially in Florence, but have spent a great deal of time in southern Italy, where my family is from, and uh, have a real passion, especially for the South. But having traveled in Italy as much as I have professionally and for fun, of course, I have picked up lots of good information along the way. And, you know, I've I, I plan trips, I plan group trips, custom itineraries for my clients, but I began doing these itinerary cons consultations because I, I see so many people, especially following the pandemic or, you know, mid pandemic, post, -pand I don't know where we are pandemic, <laughs> but people have a lot of time to dream about their trips, to plan, to listen to Katie's wonderful podcast episodes. And I also, you know, look at a lot of the, the, the message boards, the planning groups, and sometimes nod, yeah, that's a good idea. And then sometimes go, oh, that's not good advice at all. <laughs> not, not from Katie, but sometimes people offering ideas that they may have found on Instagram, especially. Um, and so these itinerary consultations are designed to really help people make sure that they're getting the most out of what they want to experience from Italy, because there's a lot of advice out there and not all of it is appropriate to each person. Um, also to help them with logistical stuff, because there's a lot of mountains in between destinations and there are some roads you want to drive and some you don't. There's all sorts of logistical things that I've had firsthand experience with. And so that's what I do on these itinerary consultations. Additionally, I also put you in contact with the really good tour guides who are hard to find um, and uh, connect you to what I think are some of the better tours out there as 
a professional in this industry, I've taken them all, the good and the bad, and I have uh, sharp opinions <laughs> on which one, <laughs> the time and money. And we respect those opinions very, very much. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll pop everyone back up here and I'm going to disappear and leave it to you two. So off you go. Okay. So the way these work is, you know, I've read your notes. You sent me your notes ahead of time. Um, then I, I'm going to ask you a few questions to try to understand a little bit more about what you want to get out of your trip. And then I have some I'll, some suggestions already, but uh, based on what you tell me, I, I'm going to modify probably on the fly. And then at the end of this call, um, I'm going to put together all of my notes for you in a document because I know, you know, when you're throwing out Italian names, it's like, ah, how do I spell that? Um, and a lot of, you know, email addresses and phone numbers and things like that. And that usually comes, you know, a day or two after this consultation. So you'll have all of those things to continue on your self-planning journey. So you said this is your first time in Italy, right? Yes, our first time. Okay. And tell me why, why are you going to Italy this summer? Well, originally we were, <laughs> we were going to go in March um, over my 40th birthday. And, mm -hmm. you know, kind of in the middle of winter with things ramping up with COVID and everything, we just felt like it would probably be in our best interest to delay it to the summer. Um, so we pushed it to June, which we realize is the peak and very busy, um, but we're going for it and we're super excited. Um, I've always wanted to go to Italy, so I'm just, we're, we're so excited to experience it and, and hopefully it won't be our first trip <laughs> or our last trip. <laughs> what made you choose the destinations that you've chosen for your trip? Um, gosh, that was, it was very hard because I know um, in looking at so many other people's itineraries, how easy it can be to add so many destinations because you just want to see it all. But I really felt like I wanted a mix of the cities. So like the major, you know, a couple major spots. And then we also wanted to make sure that we had some balance with something, especially in June, that would be on the coast and warmer and beach weather and experience kind of both sides of Italy, I'd like to think. Um, so so we actually, when we um, booked our airfare, we did a multi-city. So flying into Florence and out from Rome, mm -hmm. um, we kind of are starting there and then ending in Rome. And Atrani is right in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> and how much, well, let me ask first, you know, sort of if you're balancing art museums, food experiences, and then nature experience, meaning swimming, hiking, outdoorsy things. What's that kind of balance ideally for you and your family? Oh gosh, I would say we, I would say we definitely would prefer more leisure time, more time to wander around um, more organically versus like sticking to, okay, you know, today we have five things we have to see at this time, this time, this time. Um, Cause I feel like that, that might just make all of us a little <laughs> cranky or overwhelmed. <laughs> um, and then we all like exploring and hiking and, um, you know, checking out sightseeing and things like that outside of, you know, more urban or city areas. So I think that, um, you know, being down on the Amalfi Coast for six days, I hope will bring us a lot of opportunities to try different things like whether it's like a day on a boat or, you know, I know there's some really great hikes on the Amalfi coast um, and then maybe finding a couple swimming spots, things like that. Kind of, to, you know, unwind after Florence and prep ourselves for Rome. <laughs> um, and the one thing um, you mentioned was that you don't like windy roads, right? Yes. <laughs> so, um, Pretty much everyone in my family, except my husband, gets car sick and quite easily. So that was a big thing when we originally were scheduled to go in March. I know that uh, the boats in, on the Amalfi Coast aren't running. So our March itinerary did not include the Amalfi Coast mm -hmm. uh, because that we were originally going to stay in Sorrento. Mm -hmm. But when when June, you know, took over, uh, we realized we could take a boat which I'm hoping is better than the windy roads because <laughs> I've heard they're, 
they're they're pretty rough. <laughs> yeah. So well, I think we're going to start in the middle of your trip. Yep. We can talk about Florence and Rome, and and there's you know endless options there. But it seems like this, you know, I'm looking at your itinerary, you got six days in Atrani. So this is kind of the heart of the trip. This is where you're looking to kind of relax, enjoy some nature with hiking, yes. um, try out different restaurants you had mentioned, off the beaten path restaurants. Yes. Atrani is about the worst place <laughs> you could possibly choose. Yeah. Or those things. <laughs> Bad news. The good news is there's a, lots of other amazing options that will fulfill all those things within that immediate yeah. area. But Atrani's not it. <laughs> I think that what attracted us to it, well, first of all, it's very hard as a family of five to find places that can sleep us all. Yeah. Um, and so initially when we canceled our trip, we didn't have a year to try and find places that could sleep us all. Yeah. Um, originally we were looking in Amalfi town um, because obviously the ferries go there and the boats go directly there. Um, and there just wasn't anything. Yeah. Um, Atrani then was appealing to us because it's right next to Amalfi. We know there's a walk involved and we'll be doing it a lot and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Um but also because it felt more like at the end of the day, we can go there and kind of escape all of, or a lot of the crazy busyness and the crowds. Um, so we were like, we're going to make it work. We'll go for it. We're not afraid to, you know, like put in some walking and, <laughs> and uh, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Uh, have you, uh, Jen, uh, Katie's, piping in in the comments with, with very intelligent question. Have you paid for your Atrani accommodation already? We have, yes. So we run right. Airbnbs for each of them and it is paid for, yes. Okay. All right, so you're committed. Point, right. I don't even know that we would be able to find another option anyway that could, I mean, we had a hard time months ago finding something for the five of us. Right. Um, so yeah. So this is, okay, so that's good. And that's, Katie, that was an excellent question because now we can strategize appropriately. Um, um, so, you know, proximity to Amal Amalfi, the town of Amalfi is like Times Square. Yep. It's, you can't move. You're, you're walking like this, especially in, in high season. And there's not that much there. It's not like you need to go to Amalfi to like do any, you know, to get anything that you wouldn't be able to get in Atrani. Um, in terms of winding roads, getting out of Atrani, in and out of Atrani, there's no other way than to do that coastal road. So certainly that's if you're going to drive anywhere that's going to be part of the deal. Yeah. But if you, if you are strategic about taking the ferries, then we can move you around to some good day trips. And that's what I was hoping for. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would be sure to leave extra time. The ferries get extremely crowded. Sometimes you'll have to wait for one or two of them to go by before you can get on them. So I would just, you know, I, this is sort of like, this is kind of, I work in Campania primarily, right? So I don't want you to feel like I'm like, you know, <laughs> criticizing you. No, no, no. This is also sort of like, these are the questions like people are like, but I saw it on Instagram and it looks so peaceful. And I'm like, yep. yeah. that was uh, <laughs> from this like one tiny angle in a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Like the, you know, the, the cruise ship, the Carnival Cruise Line is like, you know, just gorging thousands of people is not in that shot. No, for sure. <laughs> I, you know, the, the Amalfi Coast is incredibly picturesque. It is probably one of the most picturesque places on earth. And so a lot of people, I think, don't even necessarily believe me when I give them this advice. But in order to have the beautiful Dolce Vita experience in crowded destinations, you just need to be very, very deliberate. When you go to other places, like you're not going to do this, but in theory for other people that are listening and might be like, oh, this is what I was thinking. If you want to have the stroll spontaneous, I found the little old lady who's making fried fish experience. You want to go to Ischia? You go to the Chilento coast, just a little bit south. Um, Amalfi has been conquered fully by the cruise lines and the luxury hotels. And so yeah. good planning is the key to all of this. So a um, few things that I'll sort of throw out as the things that you want to do so that you yeah. can start to strategize. The, the, the path of the gods. Yeah. Hiking is 
the most beautiful hike and it's you know one of the best hikes in Italy and there are uh, different guided tours that you can take or do them on your own. I would recommend doing them with a guide in this case. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's not even for the information, it's just that there are multiple ways to do the paths. And especially if you're, you're traveling with kids, yeah. you know what I mean? Like the guides really, they're, they have special training, they carry first aid kits. I just think it's worth, it's really, really worth doing one of those hiking tours. For sure. Um, they will also, if I, yeah, I stayed in Atrani. The first time I went to the Amalfi Coast, I stayed in Atrani for a few days. There's actually a staircase up to Ravello from Atrani. So I've that's a fun <laughs> <laughs> it's, And it's totally doable. I mean, it's, you know, bring yeah. a, make sure you have like large bottle of water in tow because you're going to drink it all. But that's also like just sort of like a hike to a destination that you can incorporate into your trip. Yeah. Um, the beach, most of the beaches on the Amalfi Coast are very small very pebbly yeah. um, and they're going to be the Italian word you'll, you'll learn from this is affolato which means very crowded think of it like foliage affolato yeah it's going to be cheek to gel so in terms of swimming um is, and is swimming a big priority for you no not huge I wouldn't say mm -hmm. it's yeah, I would. I think that mainly, especially the kids, want to at least experience it or have some time to be able to just like you know find a spot to swim in or mm -hmm. yeah. But no, I wouldn't say it's like a priority. Okay, because we could build that. You know, swimming is a priority. There's some amazing swimming nearby, yeah. but we're gonna get you on a boat to go to it. Yeah, there is also um, for well, let's see. People often under overlook Salerno on the Amalfi Coast. And this is another city, but it is a small city. And it's really the main departure point for the ferry. So as the ferries are coming up and down the coast, Salerno is like the big spot for it. I would also be sure to integrate an after at least a day in Salerno. In terms of finding really good food, you know, a variety of stuff, less expensive stuff than you're going to find in Amalfi and a trotting of uh, Salerno is, is going to offer you the best experience. There is a historic center. Salerno was heavily bombed during World War II. So much of the city today is modern. And sort of as you drive by, you'll see like a giant port where like okay. cars are coming in, like sh cars that are getting shipped, like, you know, new, like yep. Wards and Nissans and stuff. <laughs> But then just beyond that, there's a historic center, an ancient historic center in Salerno. And it has the Duomo of Salerno, which is another Norman Arab uh, construction from the Middle Ages, similar to the Duomo in Amalfi, but actually far more interesting and elaborate. It has a tomb underneath it uh, dedicated to St. Matthew that is exquisite. But my favorite part of the historic center of Salerno is the shopping is awesome. The rest of the Amalfi Coast, people go shopping. It's a lot of the same linens and lemons. <laughs> it's a lot of the stuff's made in China, yeah. unless you're spending a lot of money, right? You right. go to Rivello, you go to Positano, and you're going to drop some money. You can get some nice stuff. But a lot of it's just kind of the same repetitive stuff over and over again. But in Salerno, in the historic center, there's like great vintage boutiques. There's mm -hmm. lots of little um, like art galleries where artists are selling their art that's like prints of their art that's very affordable. There is a historic hat maker, uh, and I will put this in the document for yeah. you, right on Via Duomo. He is the world's best salesman, but he makes these hats in this old traditional way that his father and his great grandfather did. And it's such a fantastic experience. My, my husband bought a couple of hats from him on our last trip. It's the kind of, sh Salerno offers a kind of shopping that you think you're going to find in Florence and Rome, but like chain stores and like yeah. localization have just kind of taken away, but it still exists in Salerno. That's amazing. Yeah. So yeah. that's going to be a very easy ferry ride between Amalfi yeah. and Salerno. So that's definitely one day. That's out. Okay. You mentioned Pompeii was something you're interested yeah. in? Okay. Yeah. So that's going to be a ferry ride between Amalfi and Sorrento. Okay. Yeah. And then in Sorrento, you'll take the train. Okay. Uh, the name of the train is called the Circum Vesuviana, which means around Vesuvius. Okay. And I would also, I'm, I 
in favor of a tour of Pompeii. That's um, kind of what I was leaning towards also, yeah. Uh, at that time of year, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you the names of my two preferred tour guides. They okay. may be busy, but maybe not. Depends on your day. You might be able, it's being you're flexible too, you might yeah. be able to say to them, I've got these six days, when are you right. available? Um, it's definitely worth it. And then in Pompeii, well, one of the kind of one of the more surprising things about Pompeii is that the archaeological site is Pompeii with two eyes at the end, and then Pompeii with one eye at the end is the city. It's still a modern city. Like there's still you're like, well, really? There's still people living here? Quite a few. <laughs> um, and the food outside of the ruins is spectacular. It's like you think it's going to just be like the worst tourist food because it's near such a famous right. tourist site. No, the food is fantastic. In particular, there is one place called Mercato Pompeiano. It's close to the cathedral. So you will, when you're looking, when you arrive at Pompeii and you come to the train station, you're going to see this one big church tower. Yeah. Walk toward that. <laughs> and they have all sorts of like very just, like, they have all sorts of authentic Neapolitan food, but in particular, this is one pizza you need to get. It's called the pizza frita with ragu. So it's a pizza that's been fried, which is a, a tradition of, of Naples. Traditionally, women make fried pizzas and men make baked pizzas. Okay. It's developed, but it is. Anyway, but instead of just like a regular passata of tomato puree, they actually use that like... Um, tomatoes that they slow cooked meat in like a like a traditional like Italian American Sunday sauce or Sunday yeah. gravy and it's but it's not heavy they use just the right amount with the real buffalo mozzarella and I'm not kidding you when my husband ate it he started to cry <laughs> I have a photograph well, as proof right up my alley <laughs> a grown man cried over pizza and it was what it was like one of those serendipitous things because I was I mean, I knew that there was some good food in Pompeii, but it was, I was, we were not having one of those days. We were like, we're going to see the archaeological site, but we're hungry. Let's just eat something to have calories and nutrition in our bodies. And then it was like one of the most transcendent pizza experiences. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> so That's make, true. make sure on that day you get up early, you get on the ferry early, like, yeah. get up early. That's not, um, you know, Pompeii is an archaeological site too, is, uh, big and treeless <laughs> and so it's hot. hot. <laughs> <laughs> yep. There is not a lot of shade. The, the the sort of cafeteria I guess also closes kind of early. It closes at like three and the archaeological park doesn't close at seven so there's a certain point where you can't even like get anything to eat oh, wow. or drink. But all, all around Pompeii, this might sound like a minor detail but it's one of those things when you're there you're glad to know. Um, they have like and it's connected to like many of the like old Roman aqueducts, like just fountains that have water. So bring a water bottle with oh, you. Oh, great. Yeah. Because it really like you get so hot and, and like the walking, you know, you're walking on so much uneven ground. It's tiring. It's a very physical day. So bring right. a water bottle with you and just fill those things up whenever you can. Definitely will. Um, you know, from the Circumvesuviana, also you can go to Herculaneum. You can go to the Villa of Plantis, which is a like a, a it was a, a villa of the super rich. So it's kind of a mini Pompeii experience. If you find your kids are just really like wanting to hang out and like not do history stuff, you can instead redirect your attention to the Villa of Plantis. Okay. When when Vesuvius exploded in 79 AD, it took out the whole coast. Pompeii is just one of the towns, and it's the most famous of the towns. Yeah. But it's certainly not the only one. Villa Plantis would be like as if the Versace mansion got destroyed by. Oh, okay. And then it's been entirely excavated and you're just walking around in the one the Versace mansion in my. <laughs> That's the, that would be the Roman equivalent. Uh, yeah. And it's like very seldom anybody there. It's, it's, it's a very quiet archaeological site. So you can judge your energy and you can yeah. also let your guide know because it's just a different train stop than Pompeii. Okay. So your, your guides, all the guides that I work with, they live in Naples. So they travel out every okay. day. Um, if you find you're like, you know what, these kids of mine, they're not having it. Let them know. Can we go to Villa Aplantis instead? And yeah. you'll have a mini experience of, of that whole history. And awesome. Yeah. I love it there. 
Um, okay. So those are two days at least. Positano, in terms of exploring it, it's the most picturesque town of all. It's certainly very crowded. This is really the center. Positano is largely responsible for like the, the fame of the Amalfi Coast. You know, the important thing to sort of contextualize what the Amalfi Coast is, is like it was a bunch of beautiful little picturesque fishing villages that in the 1950s, Hollywood celebrities discovered and started going to. Um, but, you know, then like major hotel chains started putting their stuff there and and it, it's become the world that it is today. And Positano is really the center of that. So if you want to have a day of luxury, I would recommend going to the San Pietro to have aperitivi or cocktails. Be prepared to open your wallet. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is like, if you're gonna do Positano, put on something nice. Yep. Get ready to spend $30 on Negroni. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's what you're there to do. It's there. You're, there's no, there's no budget Positano. Like right. you got it. You're going to go, you're going there to have that experience. That's yeah. how you're going to experience it. You know, I, I think some, a lot of times people go to like Capri or Positano and, and they're budget conscious. And then they're just, you're just not like, that's not what you go there for. There are many other right. places that you could go there. Like you go there for luxury yep. in, in many cases. Um, so if you go to Positano, that, that's where you would go. My, uh, my personal favorite town on the Amalfi Coast, which might be a little, t I don't know that the boat stops there. And this is why it's the best town. <laughs> it's the Salerno. It's called Vietri Sul Mare. Um, V-I-E-T-R-I Sul Mare. And it's the center of where ceramics production is. So actually, there's an even smaller town, like right above it, kind of connected to it, called Raito, where a lot of the manufacturing is done. And then Vietri Sumare is where you find a lot of the workshops. It's it's really like what the Amalfi Coast used to feel like in the 50s and the 60s. Oh, cool. Um, it's where more Italian tourists go. Okay. It has lots of, um, it doesn't have any chain hotels. It doesn't have any of like that international infrastructure, which is why I guess it's off the radar, but it's. I think it's like one of the most beautiful towns really Yeah, on the Amalfi coast. Um, that is also a place where you will go to find really good food. Uh, there's one place in particular, if you can stomach a night on the road <laughs> called Locanda della Canta Storia, which I will put in the notes. It's kind of like, so the way the Amalfi coast is, right? You got like the front facing coast and it's all the windy roads. Yeah. And then there's like a highway behind it. That's less picturesque, but this, that's how you avoid the stomach aches too. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's, it's kind of near that highway. So you, you don't actually have a beautiful view and yeah. you're not like feeling like you're on the Amalfi coast per se, but the food is fantastic and it's really good local stuff. And it's where the locals go. So I would consider like going to Salerno on the ferry and then having a taxi take you to Vietri. Okay. It'll probably be like a 20 euro ride top. Yeah. It's very close. Spending a day walking around there in the town of it itself. There's actually a, a fairly nice beach there as well. It's going to be Afolato, but it's a better beach, way better beach than Atrani. And then you could also then take a, t a taxi up to this restaurant, have a fantastic dinner, get drunk so that you don't mind the drive back. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Um, and I think that that's what we always, you know, anytime we travel anywhere, looking for those really authentic places to mm -hmm. eat, you know, where locals are going and, you know, I don't want to get caught up in, I guess, what you'd call like the tourist traps, you know, like, yeah. Yeah. yeah and it's tough to do in high season in Amalfi. It's just right. so uh, discovered. <laughs> <laughs> so busy. <laughs> busy. Yeah. Uh, I, I'll just say in general for, for other people that might be watching in terms of swimming and stuff, the very best swimming in the area is at Pestum on the Chilento coast, which you could access so you could go to Salerno and then take a bus. There are these blue buses that say Cita, S-I-T-A on the side. 
and they go to Pestum. They stop in front of the Pestum temples, the temple ruins. There's three giant Greek temples there. It's a beautiful archaeological site. That's also where you could then very close by go take a tour of one of the buffalo mozzarella farms. This is the area that is most famous in Italy that all Italians agree and Italians agree on nothing, but they all agree on the buffalo mozzarella from Cilento is the very best. And then the beach at Pestum are big, long, sandy, gorgeous wow. beaches. Um, the water is a warm, salty bathtub. I mean, it is. And you're looking at the coast on one side, you're looking at the Cilento coast on the other side. It is swimming heaven. And wow. you can probably pick it to go to one of the beach clubs for the day. They got the towels, they got a restaurant, you can get a massage on the beach. It's like, yeah, that's sprinkle me there when I'm done. <laughs> yeah, that sounds perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if, if for those who are looking for swimming in this area, don't go to yeah. a mall to go swimming. Put your feet in the water and that you're gonna have to fight somebody with a selfie stick for that like three inches of water. Yeah. Ask yeah. them to go swimming. <laughs> <laughs> And what I like too about there is like Italians on the beach, they really look at it as like a restful experience. They like very seldom are people like playing music and or playing volleyball and stuff like you'll have yeah. here in the United States. Like people really go to relax. So it's it's quiet if you go to one of the, the beach clubs that's um, inhabited, that, that's visited by Italians. You know, if you hear music playing, Americans are nearby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... So I think that would, I mean, I feel like that's, you've got Vietri, you've got Positano, you've got a day in Pompeii or Villa Aplantis, if that's what you want to do. Is there anything missing from the Amalfi Coast? I don't think so. Um, I know that we had looked at doing some kind of, I, it seems like there's a lot of options for, you know, hiring someone or, you know, being on a boat of some sort, you know, mm -hmm. privately for, you know, half a day or a full day or whatever. Um, so that was something we explored also kind of in order to maybe find beaches that would be better because we knew that the beaches, you know, at Amalfino Trani were going to be, ah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess my question would be if we're coming into Salerno on the train is what I'm guessing from mm -hmm. Florence and then taking a ferry to get to Amalfi, at what point, because then I'm assuming it's the reverse when we leave to go to Rome, um, do we just intentionally have a day to go to Salerno again, you know, but without our luggage and without having to do it, you know, like, is that what you would recommend as being? I mean, I feel like, so you're going to be coming from Florence. I feel like schlep there, get yeah. in your hotel room, stay on the beach for a couple of days. You know what I mean? I'm, I really like balance in an itinerary. Yeah. You know, if you're, don't try to like jam it in just based on convenience, especially being you're already committed to try to taking that boat a lot anyway. Yeah. So Salerno leg is the easiest one. Of okay. all. Yeah. And especially going in that direction because more people are going to be going, Yeah. you know, towards Sorrento, towards yeah. Postano that way. So going towards Salerno is an easy one. And it's really like Salerno. And I can also give you a recommendation for a tour guide in Salerno who can give you a tour of the historic center. Um, it's so fantastic. I, I, it baffles me why it's so overlooked. It's an absolutely wonderful, fantastic town. Maybe I shouldn't even tell people about it because it's so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I love it. I really, really love it. And um, yeah, you know, getting on and off the boat too, like it's, you know, it's like always a little chaotic. Yeah. So just have your coffee ahead of time and decide to be <laughs> chill. If you miss the boat, there's another one coming. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's the summer on, in, on the beach. So it, it's going to be a little crazy, but certainly it's going to be beautiful. Um, one, one last recommendation that I, well, one and a half, I'm going to say. It, there's the town of uh, Maiori, which is very close to where you are, a little south on the mm -hmm. Solera side. Um, and there's a beautiful restaurant there that's built into a Norman tower. So in the Middle Ages, the Amalfi Coast was the property of the Normans, who were from northern uh northern France and they they were the rulers of southern Italy and Sicily their kingdom their capital was in Palermo but there's all these old Norman watchtowers along the coast which wow. you'll see when you're on the on boats you know they look like Shrek castles they're fortresses and in in the town of Maiori there's a one called the Torre Normana 
the Norman Tower, which is also a restaurant. And they have fantastic food there. It's it's going to be like a nicer night out. Yeah. It's going to not going to be the cheapest dinner, but it's not going to be the most expensive dinner. Like you'll spend way more for far less yeah. good food in a Malfi. Like this is worth it. You know, it's just okay. yeah. you know, like, this would be like a nice dinner out. Like maybe your last night there, you're all going to, you know, get everybody yeah. together again, maybe dress a little nicer, but you're sitting on the top of the watchtower and it sort of juts out into the sea so that you're looking back at the Amalfi Coast. And it is, wow. it is absolutely gorgeous. A lot of Italians have their weddings there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, yeah, get there, get the spaghetti and clams. Look at that view. Like that's what I would recommend as a, as a last visit. Yeah. And then also, I forget if it's in Maori or Minori. It's very close to the Norman Tower is the famous pastry shop, Sal di Riso. Um, if you've watched the Naples episode of Stanley Tucci's Searching yeah. for Italy, the guy yeah. Well, Delizia di Limone. Yes. And he has a huge pastry shop there. And if you like sweets, go. (laughs) (laughs) Deal with a windy road on the way there. But, you know, for instance, we're packing a lot of drama, man. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's not that bad, though, because it's not like up the hills. It's actually pretty. Like if you go to, um, yeah, if you go to Salerno also too, and you want to take a taxi, that would like reduce your your twist. Oh, yeah. yeah, but you know, look on the map, and yeah. I mean, just you know, like use Google Earth too to yeah. to make the assessment. Like if you think you can deal with that road or not. Okay. Yeah. People, you know, I I uh, it might you might have to use it at some point, but that that coastal road along the Amalfi Coast is. A nightmare, in my opinion, personally. I mean, I, I've, di- I've driven it myself. Um, it's I don't know. As I get older, I just am like, like, yeah, this is not. I can't do this anymore. Yeah, it's rough in the summer because it gets so crowded, and so then you'll just like kind of be stuck. So, I mean, there was just one time recently where I was like stuck behind a bus, and then a funeral procession in front of that. So it felt like the way the car was that we were like hanging off the edge of the cliff, and I. <laughs> years off my life I can't do it anymore yep no nope. <laughs> nope. bother them I mean obviously the guys who drive those buses God bless them doesn't seem to bother them but right it's not for me <laughs> <laughs> if I can avoid it yeah. all right so I think we've got a multi well strategy yeah. yes okay so we'll go back to the beginning of the trip Florence all right all right so Florence is, the whole city is like a museum. I mean, it's, it's really, it's such an exquisitely beautiful place. Your jaw is on the floor all the time. Um, and everything is so rich with art. I mean, what makes Florence special is that it's not just the museums that are filled with amazing things. Like every church is filled with amazing things. So if art history is something that you studied in college and was your favorite class in the world, Go get tickets for the Uffizi and wait online. My husband actually did go for art history in college. <laughs> they did have to go to the Uffizi. But if you, yep. like, I took art history and I slept through it, I'm going to give you permission to not go to the Uffizi. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah. For me, you know, when I took art history the first time, it's like the first, like, th- you know, my entire final exam was like the first five rooms of the Uffizi. It's like, oh my God, I know that. I wrote an essay on that. I know this. I know this. <laughs> it's amazing, right? But it's also super crowded. And I feel like it's one of those things where people are like, I'm going to Florence. What do I do? I guess I got to go to the Uffizi. Everybody's on this line. This must be a thing. Yeah. If it's, if it's not your passion, it's not your love. There's so many other amazing, beautiful, wonderful things to see in Florence where you That's have a good good meaningful experience <laughs> yep. without having to waste your time on that stupid line. Yep. <laughs> That's good to know. Yeah. I'm feeling the kids also. That's, that's where I'm also trying to balance. Like I don't, you know, I want that. I want them to experience everything, but I also don't want them to, you know, for my own sanity. I don't want to hear, <laughs> I don't want to hear complaining about, okay, I've seen enough paintings or artwork or this, <laughs> like, I don't know. I think I'm just looking for a good balance to see yeah. some things, but keep all of us. <laughs> the trap of so many of, of these places, Rome, Florence, Venice, the Amalfi Coast, Cinque Terre, like 
you know, people see the lines and they're like, well, this is obviously going to be amazing if everybody's going there. And it's like, no, it's just because there's a lot of freaking information on Instagram <laughs> and in yeah. English that makes yeah. people feel like they have to go there. And it's all about, you know, this is your trip. This is your vacation. Don't feel like obligated to wait in line for something that's like not something you're very excited about. If you're excited yeah. about it, great, wait online. It's Italy. It's going to be amazing. Yep. But don't feel obligated. Uh, other art experiences that I highly recommend, the Church of Santa Maria Novella, because you get to go inside both the church and then the cloister around it. And it's, you're really sort of understanding what Florence in the 14 and the 1500s was like when it was at, in its glory. So you'll, you'll see art, but it's, you know, it's like in its original place. Everything in the Uffizi is stuff that was in a church and then got taken out and is put in a traditional yeah. museum and a gallery. But to see the works of art as they were designed to be used and experienced is, a, you know, a really yeah. special experience. And one you really can't have in the United States. This is why we go to Europe. Yep. So Santa Maria Novella for short. Okay. There is a, if you can get tickets to this, I would recommend it. There is a church called, um, well, the, the, the chapel within the church is called the Brancacci Chapel, B-R-A-N-C-A-C-C-I. And it's, uh, was, um, the chapel has a series of frescoes by a painter named Masaccio. Now, if your husband studied art history, he wrote an essay question on okay. Masaccio's The Tribute Money, 100%. He's gonna yeah. be like, oh, that. Uh, they're, it's closed because they are restoring it. However, they are selling a certain amount of tickets for people to actually go up on the scaffolds and see the frescoes up close. Wow. So I think that's a really special, unique opportunity. And if you wow. can take advantage of it while you're in Florence, you absolutely. Yeah. Tickets are pretty limited. They could be sold out at this point. I don't know. Yep. But I would, I would definitely look into that. And it's, the church is on the opposite side of the Arno. It's called the Altro Arno from all the major tourist sites. So it's a little chiller over there. Yeah. Um, a little more local. That's also the side of the Arno where you will find very good shopping. You will find artisans and jewelry makers, you know, near the Duomo. You'll see it all. It's a small city. You can walk everything on foot in a couple hours. Um. You know, there's people selling handbags everywhere. Yeah, again, like if it's inexpensive, it was made in India. It's not quality. <laughs> not in Italy. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you got to If you want to buy good quality leather in Italy, you got to spend some serious money. Um, but I, I think like in Florence in particular, there's lots of the artigiani, the artisans, and I. That's where if you're going to do some shopping, you should spend your energy, even if you're just window shopping. Yeah. It's really special. I would definitely consider taking a food tour in Florence. Okay. I think it's a really great way to get, and I would do that like on maybe, you know, maybe not your first day because you might be jet lagged still, but your second day, because it'll help orient you to the city. Yeah. And the guides will talk to you about not just the food, but really about the history of the city. Yeah. So that was a recommendation as well for okay. anyone who I really like. And then the signature dish, depending on how, how adventurous are you food wise? Um, I would say fairly adventurous. Okay. I would say my kids are probably more adventurous than me. <laughs> so the signature dish for one of the world's most elegant cities is tripe, oddly enough. Yep. And they make these tripe sandwiches called, uh, it's a specific kind of tripe called lampredotto. So there's like cows have five stomachs, this is, or four stomachs. This is like the the fourth or the fifth one. It's a specific stomach, anyway. <laughs> oh my gosh! You know, but I, I, this is like the history of Florence too, right? Because it's like it's the Medici and the Duomo and the wealth, and Florence has been dripping in wealth since the 1300s, really. But what did everybody who did the actual work eat? They ate a lot of tripe, um, and it's actually super beloved. And it's the kind of thing where you know you'll see people. I. I I was in Florence in November and in December, and you know I see people leaving their offices and going and waiting online for tripe sandwich. So there's one in particular called okay. um, Polini, P-O-L-L-I-N-I, and these guys are just the real deal. All the tripe places are are pretty good. Like they're not like wildly different, but I have a deep affection for this one, and it's I feel like one of the more local ones. Okay. Um, the lampredotto is is served hot on this like hard crusty roll, but the secret is the salsa verde, the green sauce. It's a sauce that's made of like pulverized capers, anchovies, parsley, um, 
bread from the day before that's been sort of soaked in olive oil. Yeah. Oh, it's really good. <laughs> really good. Like, I lived in Florence during graduate school and I was like, I'm not eating tripe. I never ate it. And then on this last trip, because it was so cold and I was there, I don't know why. I just was like, yeah, know well, I'm going to try it. And I'm like, how did I, how did I spend all these years coming to Florence and never yeah. try it? It was truly delicious and like satisfying. It's like, it's real like soul food in a way. It's real like local grandma, real people food. So I would, I would, I mean, I feel like with your kids, that might actually yeah. be a fun experience. <laughs> I feel like they would like it or yeah. try it at least. <laughs> and they, uh, Triperia Polini, I guess I, can I type this into the chat box? I, I think everybody should go here. I just love these guys. Um, there you go. They're on Instagram and I, they have somebody, I don't know, the guy's, the owner's son or somebody like, that does a lot of really like, great Instagram reels and stuff. Yeah. So you can follow them and uh, awesome. you know, fall into that. I, I feel like kids, especially teenagers, they appreciate a good food adventure. And like for your nine-year-old, that'll be a really memorable experience. Definitely. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, I would say like a food tour, if you can book that tour, the Brunkaji Chapel, going inside the churches, letting your curiosity guide you. You know, I also would say don't feel obligated to climb the Duomo. Florence isn't as pretty unless you're looking at the Duomo. I feel the same way about the like, Eiffel Tower. If like I can't see the Eiffel Tower, it doesn't look like Paris. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's me. I don't like to climb things in general. <laughs> it's a lot of stairs I've heard too. It is a lot of stairs. A better climb and sort of a way to kind of get outside the city without having to rent a car or spend too much money is also a walk up to what's called Piazza Le Michelangelo. So okay. you will, um, it's a long series of stairs and it brings you to this park with this panoramic view of the city. It's absolutely oh, wow. spectacular. So you get a little exercise going up there. You'll see the Chianti Hills. You'll see the ancient medieval walls that surround Florence. It's it's a really breathtaking view. It'll be crowded. It's definitely like a well-known tourist site. Um, but you know, like like on a Sunday afternoon, especially like you'll just kind of be in the rich pageant of Florence. Yeah, right up there. And then at the neighborhood that's right below, like sort of when you're back in the city center, it, it's a very elegant neighborhood, and there's lots of wine bars there. So. You know, if your kids want to take off and you and your husband want to go have a nice adult yep. glass of wine, <laughs> that would be a good, a good spot to do it. Um, and, you know, the good thing about Florence, too, is, you know, it certainly helps to have restaurant recommend uh, reservations if you want to okay. eat at the restaurant. That's important. However, there's a lot of sandwiches. There's a lot more street food that you can eat, yeah. you, can, you know, like gelato and all of that. It's you can get by without having too much planning. But if you want to make sure that you have like a good dinner planned, yeah. then I would um, book a reservation. Okay. Okay. Time. Yeah. Uh, there was one thing else I want to say about Florence and I, for, I forgot. Oh, another thing I'm going to, I'm going to tell you to don't waste your time online. The sandwiches at Antico Vinayo. Antico Vinayo is this famous sandwich shop. When I lived in Florence, I lived around the corner from it. It was my local wine bar. It was a good sandwich. It was nice, lovely. Then I got on Food Network. And then they started putting like four times the amount of meat inside the sandwich. And people wait on obscene lines for it. It's fine. It's a sandwich. I think, you know, like, what, what am I missing? How am I? No, the, obviously all these people can't be wrong. It's fine. It's a sandwich. Like yeah. you can eat a really good sandwich, like pretty much anywhere in Florence. <laughs> right on that line. There's better things to do. Yep. So I would make sure that you do have the signature, what's called schiacciata bread, which you will experience if you take a food tour okay. for sure. Um, just don't feel, yeah, don't, don't buy that. Don't believe the hype. Don't wait on that line. You don't have That's to. Good to know. <laughs> That's very good to know. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you feel like with, um, I guess, essentially really only four days in Florence that it is worth it to try and do some sort of a day tour outside of Florence? Or do you think that would be just like maybe too much? <laughs> I think that would be too much, yeah. yeah. Especially because you're going down to Amalfi afterwards. Yeah. I mean, if this was like, you know, then I'm leaving Italy, then yeah. But right. yeah. And if you go out to, like, if you go up to the Piazza di Michelangelo, you'll sort of get out and see the cypress trees. Yeah, yeah. That. Okay. So Florence is like in a bowl. Yep. And then surrounded by the hills. So as soon as you step outside the city, you're you're there. 
Um, yeah, I think it would be too much. And I, I'm a big fan of just sort of minimizing travel time because there's so much to experience being in these places in Florence is one of the, the best places in the world to just wander and, you know, like just experience, just live. <laughs> That's what I'm most like looking forward to is kind of just the aimless wandering, yeah. <laughs> seeing what we can find. Yeah. Cause, because you are going to have to be more deliberate in Amalfi about your days. Yeah. Yes. I would enjoy the wandering in Florence. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Good. So any more questions on the Florence leg of this? I don't think so. No, I think that all sounds great. Okay. So then you finish in Rome for three days? Four days. Yeah. Four days. Okay. Yep. So in Rome, you have got to make restaurant reservations yesterday. Okay. It is very hard to eat well in Rome without a lot of pre-planning, which, you know, double-edged sword, right? Lots of great restaurants. Um, eater.com has a fantastic list. Like that's okay. the that's the list that you should use to make your, cho your choices about restaurants. Cause there you also get a sense of pricing, you know, you're traveling okay. with family, like yeah. you want to think about budget ahead of time, that sort of thing. Uh, you're going to need generally to get like the really good food sort of to the outskirts of Rome, within the center of Rome, near the Colosseum, near the, the Pantheon, all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> when you are sightseeing, just be like, you know, yeah. like the initial idea when I went to Pompeii, I just need to eat something. Yeah. <laughs> you know, don't be looking for the meal of a lifetime around there. Just get something that yeah. will you know, fill, you, fill you up. Um, but yeah, it's you cannot be spontaneous with food in Rome. You okay. gotta, 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 gotta make those plans ahead of time. Uh, if this is your first time in Italy, if you got to do the Colosseum and the Vatican. So this is yep. where you're gonna be. You got to be a real tourist, and you got to <laughs> see these things because you're in Italy, right? Definitely. So I recommend for the Colosseum doing it later in the day if you can do okay. a city tour of the Colosseum. These are also reservations you should make ahead of yeah, time. Yep. I recommend doing that one later in the day. Uh, the Vatican, however, I recommend doing the very early morning tour. They have a tour that you can purchase that includes breakfast. Oh. And I think if I'm getting up at 730, <laughs> give me some food along the way. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's just like coffee and like a brioche. Yeah. The marmalade it's nothing special yeah i just feel like it's a complete experience and it honors the fact that you have woken up early <laughs> yeah like you're gonna do it you do right and those tours i mean in june it's they're probably pretty full of the but um you know the, the vatican in general closes early so no matter what you have to go early so i feel yeah. like you just go for it all the way and, and do the yeah. Tour. yeah and they do limit those those are smaller than okay. later day tours so you might want to book that enough for your first day because you'll i mean the traveling between florence and rome is is easy yeah. uh, take the fast train which is called the freccia rosa there are many different train well not many but there's like um two three train lines in particular they're like three different companies okay train italia italo and the freccia rosa which is the fast train it costs more than the others but it's yep. totally worth it Okay. Totally worth it. <laughs> Same thing from Salerno to, uh, well, you're going, yeah, to Salerno. The Freccia now yeah. goes to Salerno. You, Naples used to be the last stop, but now it goes to Salerno. Okay. Yeah. 100% worth the extra money. If a quiet car is important to you, make that reservation ahead of time. Okay. The Italians like to talk. So, <laughs> so, we'll so we probably should not opt for the quiet car. Not your kids, yeah. yeah. But I mean, people are on their cell phones. I mean, okay, yeah. You know, it's uh, the trains are so nice. I mean, it's, traveling by train in Italy is is one of the great pleasures of traveling in Italy, in my opinion. And the Freccia is really fantastic. Uh, and you can just buy those tickets at the kiosk. Um, yeah. You can't buy them online, but sometimes if you don't know the exact time you're leaving, you can't just buy them at the kiosk. And that, I think that was really bogging me down. Like, do I need to be like knowing exactly what time we should be, you know, taking mm -hmm. a train from place to place? Or is this something we truly can just, all right, we're going to go and buy tickets when we get there. I mean. Yeah. I, you know, it's always a tough call for me at first. But I've never, I've never, and I go to Italy, you know, well, you know, like pre-pandemic days, like three, four times a year for work. 
And I usually fly, I usually fly direct from New York to Rome and then take a train down to Naples because it's where I work primarily. And, and I'm always hesitant to buy a ticket ahead of time because what if my flight is delayed? And then yes. it's such a pain in the butt to change your time. So I never do it. And I've actually never once had a problem of just buying okay. it right there. Now, I'm also not so rigid that like it has to be the quiet car or I need yeah. to be in first class. If I were, if I had very strict requirements about that, then I would maybe buy the ticket. I don't know. I'm flexible. I think the whole, the, the whole train is a million times better than any train I've ever taken in New York City. So it's yeah. all <laughs> luxurious. <laughs> People, yeah, if you saw the New York City subway. <laughs> it's a whole other experience. Expectations are very low. That's right. Um, yeah, so I, I would say in Rome, you are going to have a classic tourist experience, and that's great. And, you know, even historically, Rome is a pilgrim city. It has always been a city that people have come to visit, to see the sights, yep. to do the things. And if you haven't been to Italy before, this is where you just fully embrace your, your tourist self. Yes. And, and again, don't feel obligated to do things that don't interest you because there's so many different things that you can experience. Yes. Is there, are, are there any sites or any piece of history in particular that you are looking forward to seeing? Um, I think the Colosseum I'm most and like excited to see. And I don't know why, but I just am. <laughs> but um it's famous and it's amazing. Yeah. Yes. And I think, you know, I've looked kind of browse tours online and it always I don't know, you know, is this one because it seems like some of them are advertising, you know, you can go underneath and see more, you know, like exclusive areas that they have access to. Is that something that's worth it? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Definitely. Okay. Okay. Yep. Those are good. Yeah. The, um, you know, it, some of the tours, you know, some of the, some of the guides are better than others. Some of them you can tell are like, they've just done that tour too many times and yep. <laughs> <laughs> you need to retire. Other ones are really enthusiastic and wonderful. It's hard to predict. Yeah. You know, it depends on the time of day. Obviously if you go earlier in the day, it's generally better in terms of the guide's energy. But then I think the sunset tour is a, a different experience and then just sort of like walk, walk, walking around the forum and all of that in the evening. It's also less hot. Yes. That's a really nice experience. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's good to know. I like that idea of trying it later in the evening too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Rome is going to be busy. It's going to be hot. It's, you know, a much more frenetic city like Florence. It'll be busy, but like, I don't know. It's, it's got a different energy. It's, it's a small city. It's a very elegant place. Um, Rome is way more, you know, you've got every, you got, it's the, it's a modern, it's the capital of Italy, right? So it's like, people are trying to get to work, yep. religious tourists that are going there. You get a lot. So you get a lot of tour buses of people that are making their pilgrimage to the Vatican or to various pilgrimage sites around the city. You have the regular day trippers. I mean, you got, you got it all. It's, it's a, it's an ancient destination. So yeah, it's going to be like, probably like a little more stressful, but you will have already been, enjoying all these wonderful things. And I think it's good to have after Amalfi where the, you know, the, the pace will have been. Yeah. Slow. Yes, definitely. Okay. Yeah. That sounds, that sounds good. I feel better. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Are there any other questions in general you have about anything at all about the trip overall? Um, I don't think so. Um, not really. I think we're just looking forward to, um, everything and experience it all and um having some good walking shoes yep. <laughs> walking shoes water bottles uh mm -hmm. the key to italy in the summer <laughs> um yeah no i think this all sounds really good and i like the idea of um especially in florence you know like maybe eating our way through the city during the day and maybe picking one night that we especially you know like go out to dinner intentionally and make maybe make a reservation or whatever but yeah. Um, yeah, I think I like that plan. Um, yeah, no, I think, I think this was really great and I feel less overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Good, good. All right. Yeah. And I'm really glad we got to strategize that at the Trani because otherwise, yes. you know, given the, given your aversion to traveling twisty roads, that would have been really a bummer in the For middle. Sure. Of the yeah. Very yes. So good. Glad we could we could cut that off. So yeah. So I um, 
you know, it's Sunday night here in, in New York. And then, so I'm going to probably just go have a glass of wine now. And tomorrow I will type up these recommendations All right. and send them to you. And then you can feel free to write me back with any other questions that you have. And you'll have to give us a full report and let us know. Definitely will. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Oh, that was so great. Oh, I learned, you know, like I've done a lot of travel to Italy too, and I learned a lot of things. I think the key takeaways for me from this consult, Danielle, was, you know, the planning around a training to make the most of your time in the Amalfi Coast, just to get a, a like a plan in place would be a really good idea. Uh, because, yeah, sometimes it's the only time you can travel, and so you have to take you can take it and you're just going to make it work. And I think that's a great, was some great suggestions there. The other one is, yeah, definitely book your restaurants in Rome. And I think that applies to any time of the year because um, most people who listen know my favourite restaurant is Roscioli. <laughs> and um, oh, I can just remember the sad faces with people coming into the restaurants and they were going, Oh, no, there's no table. Sorry. <laughs> I was there in like no. December as Omicron is descending and there's no tourists. And I was trying to go to restaurants and they're like, you don't have a reservation? Get out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so true. And you do not, I mean, like you're in Rome, you want to have a good, you just, you want the best, you know. But I think another thing as well is like a really favourite area for me for food in Rome is Testaccio because that's more of a neighbourhood. And you can walk there if you, you know, just get those walking shoes going. Um, and you can walk there pretty easily from, you know, the, um, oh, I guess, Campo di Fiori area. So um, it's a nice walk along the Tiber there uh, and even up the hill. But I think, yeah, I, I totally agree. Make those reservations. And then the last one is something that we are so in symbiosis with, Danielle, is just do it your own way. Don't feel pressured to do things just because, you know, you saw it on some itinerary online or no, like Italy, you you'll have an amazing time no matter what. So don't, you know, if you don't, if you're really not into art, do not spend half a day in the Uffizi Gallery or the Vatican Museums because it's you you know, I mean, it is amazing. There's no doubt, but you know, you're not it's not like it anymore by having gone to that experience where you waited online, you were in a crowded museum, you didn't understand what you were seeing. Like it's so much better to have a meaningful experience of art than just a, an obligatory one. Yeah, totally. And that applies to everything. It's like um, a cooking class, for example. I see a lot of people asking for cooking classes and it's like, well, what do you want to learn to make? Like you want to go, you yeah, know, you can learn like anywhere in Italy, you can learn to make like a pasta with a ragu, like they'll teach you. But is that what you want to learn to make? Or do you want to learn to make something that's really special to you, like maybe a ravioli or something? I don't know. Like, I'm just throwing it out there. But, um, yeah, just have a think about what you want to learn to make rather than just I have to do a cooking class because it's kind of like if you're not going to make it later, <laughs> it's kind of like, what's the point? <laughs> so, okay. So then we did actually, someone's just asked a question, what's the best mode of transport in Rome? And this is, I'm not being funny. It's actually your feet. Um, yeah, you just get around on foot. There's no there's no easy way. I mean, sometimes we get a, the odd taxi if we wanted to get from one place to the other. Um, but, you know, last time we were there with our family, I've got oh, that my kids were four years old and I think we got one taxi. All right, and I have a very low um, whining threshold. <laughs> So, like, if the four-year-olds can handle it, so can you. I think that's the yes. main thing. Yeah. Mm. Oh, well, thank you so much, um, Jen, for sharing your trip with everyone today and Danielle for really, you know, sharing your expertise. And, I uh, you know, there's so many gems in there that it's just not even funny. Uh, we will be posting this on our YouTube channel. And we will, um, so if you, anyone wants to watch it again, including you, Jane, you can do that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, oh, Maria has asked, what's the name of the neighbourhood in Firenze where the Sidbreo Cafe is? And that's, that's the yeah. Sant Ambrosio. Yeah, Sant Ambrosio neighbourhood. And so, um, yeah, so everyone, if you would like to have your own very own consult with Danielle where she can take you through some tips <laughs> how can they do that danielle uh you can go to feasttravel.com and you can book it right online my calendar my live calendar is available there and you can just book your spot 
And then from there, you'll send me your itinerary and we will do your customized version of what we just did with Jen. Amazing, amazing. Well, thank you both so much for your time. And Jen, have a wonderful, incredible, life-changing trip to Italy. And I'm sure the kids are just going to love it. And, you know, I know, I've got a feeling it's going to spark a lifetime of adventures for them too. I hope so. Thank you so much. <laughs> Grazie. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Ciao. Bye.